Retirement can be exciting. You might finally have the time and money to travel, to pursue hobbies, and to reconnect with far-flung relatives. But let's face it, for many, retirement can also mean increased financial stress and anxiety. Concerns about your health or the health of your spouse may take up time and energy. For many, money is a principal retirement worry. You might worry that you'll run out of money or find yourself unable to afford the retirement lifestyle that you've hoped for. Or maybe self-managing your retirement portfolio has become too stressful. Today, many can expect a retirement of 30 years or more. And if you're hoping to leave money to a spouse, heir, or charitable cause, you'll need your money to work for even longer. Needless to say, the stakes are high. At Fisher Investments, we've helped thousands of individuals and families plan their financial future so that they can enjoy a comfortable retirement with minimal worries. We can't prevent you from worrying about your garden or your golf shot, but we can help you to plan your financial future. In our experience, we have seen some common mistakes that can trip up investors. In this video, we share seven common retirement investing mistakes. These aren't meant to scare you or give you the sense that peril is lurking around every corner. Rather, we're sharing these so that you can potentially learn from them and feel more confident making investing decisions. Diversifying your investments across countries, sectors, and individual securities is a tried and true strategy for mitigating risk. When it comes to investing, it makes sense not to put all of your eggs in one basket. Over the years, we have seen several ways investors misinterpret this advice, often resulting in overly concentrated or an inefficient portfolio. Some investors concentrate too much of their portfolio in a single investment and possibly take on more risk than is prudent. Investors may end up doing this when optimism or overconfidence makes this action seem safe. For example, you may hold a significant portion of your portfolio in your company's shares, perhaps because the company has done well for years, or because you have a good feeling about future prospects. Calculations like these may be based more on emotion than on economic fundamentals. But if that seemingly stable security becomes volatile or loses significant value, your retirement could be in jeopardy. Alternately, some investors attempt to diversify by investing in five, six, or more funds, presuming that they will increase diversification. However, depending on the underlying holdings in those funds, this could leave you over-diversified. If each of your funds holds hundreds of different securities, you could potentially have exposure to thousands of individual securities. Exposure to so many stocks can make even matching the performance of the overall market difficult once fund fees are taken into account. Alternately, you might end up owning the same securities many times over, leaving you too concentrated in certain companies. For example, Two Fidelity Mutual Funds, Large Cap Value and Large Cap Growth Enhanced, contain 64 of the same holdings. 38% of the Large Cap Growth Enhancement Fund's holdings are also held by the Large Cap Value Fund. If you hold these two funds in an attempt to diversify your portfolio and manage risk, you may be actually creating a more concentrated portfolio that is less diversified than you'd hoped. Trying to time the market is almost impossible and mistakes can be very costly. Corrections or sentiment-driven market drops of about 10 to 20% can come without warning and the recovery that follows can be just as fast. Bear markets are fundamentally driven market declines of 20% or more for an extended period that often come on slowly and without announcing themselves. Importantly, bear markets are based on fundamentals. Corrections are sentiment-based and can change rapidly. That's why it is so hard, even for investment professionals, to time the market. 
For a long-term equity investor, we believe it's prudent to stay invested unless you have strong reasons to believe the market is in the early stages of a prolonged downturn, with most of the losses still ahead. And your reasons must be unclouded by emotion or other biases. Consistently identifying a bear market early on, let alone predicting one before it starts, is extremely difficult. To fully benefit from stock's superior long-term average returns, you need to stay invested. Further, trying to sidestep short-term bouts of negative volatility can have significant consequences if you're wrong. And, in truth, it's probably more a matter of when you're wrong than if. We know no one's smart enough and savvy enough to time all market moves. Being out of the market can mean missing important updates, which can add up to huge opportunity costs over time. The S&P 500 index has grown 2,754% cumulatively from January 1988 through the beginning of November 2020. But if you miss just the 10 best days in the market over that period, then your cumulative return would drop to 1,208%, and your annualized return would drop from 10.7% to 8.1%. Even seemingly small differences in your annualized return can have a tremendous impact over years of investing. This exhibit shows how a $500,000 initial investment in 1988 would have grown depending on whether you remained fully invested or missed some of the best updates. Just missing the 10 best updates would reduce the final value of your portfolio by more than half. Many retirees believe that they need to take a cautious, low volatility approach to investing. They may want to create predictable income streams or to protect their principal and their peace of mind. Some stable, low-returning investments may be right to include in your portfolio depending on your investing goals and personal situation. But if you need long-term portfolio growth to reach your investing goals, investing too cautiously could increase the risk you run out of money in retirement or fall short of other investing goals. Trading the stress of the stock market for the lower but more predictable returns of bonds may seem like an acceptable trade-off, but even seemingly small differences in your average annual returns become very significant over time. Say you have a $500,000 portfolio. For simplicity, let's assume that if you invested it in bonds, your average annual return would be 5%, while if you invested in stocks, your average annual return would be 9%. These two rates of return would lead to dramatically different investing results over 10, 20, or 30 years. Often, investors focus on one risk, the risk of volatility, while ignoring other investment risks. It's common to focus on what is right in front of us, and we tend to feel the pain of losses very sharply. Myopic loss aversion, an important insight of behavioral finance, explains the common tendency for investors to focus on short-term losses because we tend to feel much more pain from losses than we take pleasure in gains. This can cause investors to go to great lengths to avoid losses, even if it means giving up future gains. Investing carries an inherent risk-return trade-off. To earn higher long-term returns, you may have to endure market volatility and accept more short-term risk. However, whether this is appropriate for you depends on your personal situation, goals, and other factors. It's easy to forget about inflation, but doing so can be costly. Recently, inflation in the US has been quite low averaging only about 3% per year. But even at this relatively low rate, inflation can have an insidious effect over a long retirement. You can think of inflation as an unavoidable cost eating into your purchasing power each and every year. 
Inflation means the expenses you have today will likely cost more in the future. Typically, inflation is measured by evaluating the costs of many consumer goods and services, food, cars, gas, education, housing, healthcare, and seeing how the overall prices change over time. While the historical rate of inflation in the U.S. has been right around 3%, some categories, such as healthcare and education, have experienced much more dramatic increases. What would 3% annual inflation do to your purchasing power over time? You can see that after just 10 years, what used to cost you $50,000 will now cost nearly $67,000. That's a whopping 34% increase. And over a long retirement, the impacts of inflation can be much greater. Most long-term investors want to maintain or increase purchasing power over time. To do that, you'll need to factor inflation into your financial planning, and you'll need growth to match or outpace the rate of inflation. Many investors ignore international stocks and invest only in U.S. companies. Some investors assume that they can diversify by investing in U.S.-based multinational companies, while others may have a home country bias and believe U.S. companies make for better investments. Fisher Investments believes investing globally in both U.S. and international stocks is advantageous. Why? Because U.S. and non-U.S. stocks perform differently. Investing in both U.S. and non-U.S. stocks can create a less volatile portfolio. As this graph shows, sometimes U.S. stocks perform better and sometimes non-U.S. stocks perform better. But any outperformance is temporary and U.S. and non-U.S. stocks tend to change leadership positions often. By owning both U.S. and non-U.S. stocks, you can create a diverse portfolio and potentially experience less volatility, smoothing out your long-term returns. Social Security is an important component of the American retirement system. And for many, Social Security benefits are an essential source of cash flow in retirement. But your benefit will likely not replace all of your income in retirement. For average earners, Social Security retirement benefits only replace about 40% of pre-retirement earnings. If you have lower earnings, your benefits will likely replace a larger percentage of your income. If you are in the upper income brackets, your Social Security benefits will likely replace a smaller percentage of your income. That may sound counterintuitive, but the Social Security program was designed to reduce poverty amongst retirees. As such, annual earnings above a set amount do not count towards your benefit. The average monthly Social Security payout in June of 2019 was $1,470. This will likely be a very welcome source of retirement income. But remember that Social Security is just one part of a successful retirement strategy. Fees paid for investments or investing advice can add up fast and make a huge difference over time. Paying excessive fees can make it less likely that you can achieve your long-term financial goals. Fees can cost you, no exaggeration, hundreds of thousands of dollars over your lifetime. Let's say you own two mutual funds and put a million dollars in each, held your funds for 20 years, and didn't take any distributions. Let's assume both funds have matching average annual returns of 10%, but one has annual fees and expenses of 1.5% and the other 2.4%, with both fees assessed at the end of each year. As you can see, all things being equal except fees, the one with the lower fees will put over $800,000 more into your pocket over time. When you think of how hard you worked for your money, it simply doesn't make any sense to pay high fees. In working with our clients and talking to prospective clients, 
we see these seven common retirement investing mistakes again and again. Any one of these mistakes, or several in conjunction, can derail your retirement plans. We hope this video has helped you to learn some pitfalls to avoid. Thanks for tuning in. And if you are interested in learning more about how Fisher Investments might be able to help you plan for a comfortable retirement, please contact us today. If you enjoyed this video, you can click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified when we publish new content.